Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here. For this video, director Lisa Downs is back on my channel to discuss her latest project called Life After the Goonies. Lisa's most recent documentary, Life After the Neverending Story, is now out to buy. As Lisa continues her documentary journey in this interview, she explores her love for the Goonies and what it meant to her as a child, and she discusses the very special rewards she has on offer for those who back the Kickstarter. So Lisa, you are back again on my channel back again. to discuss your latest project, which is Life After the Goonies. Now, the last one we did was six months ago for your uh, most recent documentary, which is Life After the Neverending Story. And it's finally out. Yeah. I know. It's great. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love this documentary. You've done the other two as well, Life After Navigator and Life After Flash. For those who are unfamiliar with Lisa's work. It is nice to see them as a little kind of trio now because of just how long it's taken to make them. It's yeah yeah oh definitely i love the little sort of the thing you carry over with the design at the top that sort of retro kind of color pattern there it's like the old yeah. vhs tapes you know <laughs> that's all we were going for <laughs> <laughs> so lisa what made you decide to choose the goonies as your next uh documentary i was born in 82 and i think anyone who is like an 80s kid will understand the importance of the goonies the film that made me get into film in the first place I wanted to be their friend and go on an adventure. And I didn't realize people made movies as a kid. I was like, well, I must have to be an actor if I want to go on adventures and be friends with the Goonies. So that's just <laughs> in my mind. I was like, well, I'll just be an actor then. So it was just a really special film. And as soon as we were halfway through Flash and decided to do this as a series, the Goonies was mm. always, 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 always my like holy grail of the one that I wanted to do. Appreciating there are a lot of moving parts more so than the others. So it had kind of been on my mind since 2015. And when I was filming Flash in 2017, we were in Portland with Sam. And I was like, well, we're so close to Portland. I mean, we may as well just go to Astoria. So we spent like a day in Astoria and I filmed it in the museum. And and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to email Richard Donner to see if he would do an interview. Who would say yes to, you know, Flash walking out and I was, you know, just not really anyone. And um, no questions, just, yep, we'd be happy to. So I was so, so lucky to get this amazing interview with Richard Donner. He mm -hmm. had like the original One-Eyed Willy like next to me and I couldn't stop. Wow. I was so nervous. Um, and then there was just, you know, the pandemic and the other films were coming out. So I'm always a believer in timing is everything. So mm -hmm. I feel like it was wonderful that I obviously got the Donner interview, but it now is definitely the time that it, it's it's good that it's happening now but it took that long to you know everything's working in the background and but just goonies for me is the holy grail of films well see it's interesting yeah because the same experience with me was um we were born the same year so goonies was very much just a movie to watch you know it's always on during the summer the goonies was you know and if, i think everyone could sort of somewhat relate to the characters even though you may not have a friend who can make gadgets and so forth but you knew someone who's kind of had those traits a group of friends you could always kind of relate to each of the goonies you know in some exactly. way which gave it that kind of thing also but because it's like a a bit of an indiana jones kind of adventure romp it kind of it's a version for kids you know minus you know house and Ford. it was <laughs> just know? it was fun wasn't it like I, I just wanted to be their friend like you're mm. watching these films that they're your age and they're going on these incredible adventures and it's funny and it's dramatic and it's magical and like who doesn't grow up wanting to find buried treasure and all these like just incredible experiences that they go on and like the relatability, you know, like with the yes. with the playing the bones, every, you know, as a kid you take piano lessons, you're know, like I could be the one that plays the bones and <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just such a, a, a magical film and uh, I'm really excited to be doing a documentary on it. Well, the Goonies has not been covered. As far as I'm aware, in an extensive documentary, not extensive. There was one that um, someone did, I believe, for the 30th anniversary, and I think they had a um, a screening in a story. But I believe it was maybe like a half hour talking heads kind of interview thing, but right. nothing that really encapsulates the full deep dive that the life afters do. You know, and I'm a strong believer that it's the fans are such a huge part in why these films could have these legacies beyond being an amazing film. So, you know, I really love to incorporate 
the fandom into it as well and and it really is like an all-encompassing deep dive as opposed to just you know maybe talking to a small handful of actors so there's nothing nothing really no that's been done on it no because Warner Brothers haven't done anything particular I mean years ago when it came out on DVD they did that kind of very unique thing of this video commentary where you could see all the cast kind of with Richard Donner provide a commentary also it kind of demonstrated that too many people doing a commentary was it you know, became unmanageable, you know, yeah. with Corey, um, I think Corey uh, Feldman sort of taking, <laughs> taking over. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but you say, so, you, you know, you, with the other ones you've done, you'd already kind of, as you mentioned, you shot an interview with Richard Donner. Um, so you already got, you had things planned ahead. So where mm-hmm. are you now with the production but before you even launched the Kickstarter for this crowdfund? Cause I know you'd already had things in motion, right? Yeah. For me, all of these films, there's always like a key person or a couple of key people that I just know that I couldn't do the documentary if they weren't involved. So for me, it was getting the okay from Richard Donner. Mm. That was really important to me, which, so I reached out and we had this great conversation. He's like, make it a good one. And, (laughs) you know, I, I wanted him to be okay with me doing a documentary. And the other one was Sean Astin. Mm. And even though I had filmed the Donner interview and I'd filmed in Astoria, I didn't want to really get the ball rolling until I knew that Sean was going to be involved because as a fan myself, I wouldn't want to watch something if Sean wasn't involved. And it's a lot to invest in if Mm. down the line he was like, oh, actually, no, I don't want to be a part of it. So it just took that long to really get hold of Sean. And Mm. finally, um, the beginning of May, I went to, I was like, I'm just going to bite the bullet. He's in Liverpool Comic Con. I'm just going to go up, book a hotel and try and talk to him. I knew that Mark Marshall had been emailing him, emailing him saying you should, you know, Lisa's going to be in Liverpool. You should give her five minutes. And um, so I just went up and luckily Tammy Stronach, Child Like Empress, has Mm. just done her film. For anyone in America watching, by the way, Man and Witch is in US cinemas in July for two nights, go and book tickets. It's amazing 80s throwback. And Sean Astin is one of the voices in the film. Ah. So I had said to Tammy, I'm going to go to Liverpool just to try and talk to Sean. And she was like, well, I'll come to Liverpool. I can do a few things anyway. I can get him to help promote Man and Witch and then I can help you connect. So it just all kind of worked that finally I got five minutes with Sean. I was so nervous. I was like, (laughs) I'll be shaking. Um, So I explained kind of what I had done and Donna interview and and he was like well why wouldn't I do it I'd love oh, to do it amazing I was like thanks Sean now I can actually do it and so it just felt like the timing was right and then Goonie Day was coming up and Bayman mm. Zachary the new owner of the Goonie house is so lovely and fully on board and it just felt like everything was happening for it to happen now yeah yeah, yeah. it's our time so <laughs> um it just it worked out and so I just with Sean's okay I knew that it it could happen. You launched a Kickstarter a couple of weeks ago. You've already reached half your goal nearly, which is very impressive. So you've Mm. got another two weeks left. Now, your Kickstarter has some very unique rewards, doesn't it? Something that, you know, most people can't offer. So, yeah, do you want to let people know what you've got available? I'm so blessed for all the wonderful people that that have gifted stuff. So obviously part of the the Kickstarter, you can get the Blu-ray or like the collector version of the Blu-ray. We're doing a Viewmaster of behind the scenes stills. And funnily enough, um, the company doing the Viewmaster, which I love this, I had no idea where they were. And when they said they'd help, I looked into them and they're in Oregon. I was like, oh, it's a Goonies thing. Mm. The lady who runs the Viewmaster emailed back and she said, oh, my dad, I took over the company from my dad, who was the original photographer on the Goonies set for the original <gasps> Viewmaster. He spent four weeks on set. So I love these kind of connections that are happening. So I'll interview him for it to talk about his experience. Um, There's like a merch bundle and obviously you can get associate producer, executive producer credits and and all these fun things. But if you want to go to the Goonies house, so if you visit now, like Bayman's wonderful, you can go and do the truffle shuffle and walk up to the house and he's very accommodating. Um, But he's kindly donated three different rewards. One is to recreate, have a photo opportunity at the house so you can stand on the, the, the porch and be like Mikey. And so you can have your photo on the house. Uh, you can have a private tour um, with Bayman around the house and the attics there, like it is yeah. the house from the film. Um, 
And that's for up to four people and the photo is up to two people. So you can take friends for those ones if you get it. Um, or you can join us, and only 10 people can do this, um, a movie night in the Goonies house. Like we'll have pizza, we'll have drinks, we can watch a movie. I won't say which one, the <laughs> link is in, but we'll watch a movie <laughs> in the house. Um, and it'll just be this really fun experience. And so that reward, if you get that, you can take a friend as well. So it's like for two people. So I'm just so excited. And that will be around Goonie Day next year. But the tour and the photo opportunity, you can just arrange with Bayman uh, whenever you're in Astoria. So I'm just like, how exciting to to be able to even just see the house and go in the house. And I'm just so grateful for Bayman for offering these amazing opportunities to, to have these experiences. I mean, that's the most interesting, most niche novel thing you could probably offer for a Kickstarter, like go in the house. That's I know. nuts, absolutely nuts. Because a friend of mine, he said he purchased for his sister like a piece of the Goonies house because he said, oh, it, the house was torn down. I was like, what? No, what? What? You know, then it's no. there. You know, he's like, wait it a minute. It's a renovation, I believe. And so you can buy. Ah, oh, right. Because he was under the impression that the thing had been destroyed or something like that. And he had the no. little piece of it. And I was like. He, it will true. be it will be authentic because they did yeah. do renovations and so they are floating around. But yeah. what they did was, um, I think they had moved a couple of walls on in the interior. So mm. I think um, you know there are the kind of plans to maybe try and get it back to how it was. But it's definitely yeah. the house and the porch is there, and it's just oh, it's so magical when you go to a story. I've only been for that one afternoon, but when you come around the corner, it just see the house. you just. It's so hard to comprehend that you're like in Goonie Land. And yeah, the- yeah. For one movie, never had a sequel. They talked about sequels for years and years and years. And even Richard Donner was going to, he always had a little bit of information that he was going, oh, we're going to make it now. Oh, we're not going to, you know, then it was six months later, a year later, six years later, whatever, and still yeah. nothing. I, as always, I think they always, you know, missed the boat on that. It was, they left it too I late. Think- they were always very open to the idea, but and this is why I love the the 80s movies too, is that mm. no one did anything just for the money. Mm. You know, it, creatively it had to be right for the story. It had to be right for the the kind of legacy of, of the film. And so they were open to the idea of a sequel. It's just the right script never came along and the yeah. right story and, you know, and and you have such a high bar set with those actors in the first one, it would be so hard to do a really good sequel that you're not just comparing it straight to the original. Well, yeah, either you play it out as that they're adults and their kids then go on this journey themselves, or you could, and there was, maybe one of the adults would join them, but you couldn't have, you couldn't replicate it with this kind of middle aged people. <laughs> you know, no, it would be a very strange experience. Be, you, know? you would be trying to either replicate it or it just would be so hard to re- replace them and that magic that was created in that and that is why i love 80s kids films because we don't have et2 we don't have goonies no. too. you know it's just they knew when to say no to things maybe potentially one of the last interviews richard donna did uh because i'm not seeing much Probably. After that. yeah because he was you know it's always thinking of richard donna he was a guy who had so much energy mm. even at his age he always felt like he was younger but you yeah. know, by, by the end, you know, it, all, it catches up with him, with him quickly. And yeah. uh, I was, and I was not, kind of gutted when he had passed away because we all thought he'd live forever. <laughs> you know, and you do. You just kind mm. of think someone like him is invincible. You know, yeah. he was like you, your parent. Like he, you know, you don't. You think your parents are invincible, and to me, he, you know, was this other goonie, and mm. um, it was really special meeting him. And it was yeah, a couple of years later, lockdown happened, and and yeah, yeah it's just really sad. The quality of Goonies is a it's got a brilliant combination of Spielberg, Donna, and Chris Columbus. You know, it's yeah. kind of that, that right middle of the eighties where they're all riding a massive high from Spielberg's success, and um, even like the following year, following the year before, so with like uh, Gremlins, and uh, Donna yeah. seemed to be the ideal guy to make the ultimate family film after having done, done Superman. So it was always yeah. as a kid, as a kid, you see Sloth ripped the shirt off. I was like, the Superman theme kicks in. I was like, what? What's, what's this? So yeah. I didn't know the connection. I didn't know as a child that it was Richard Donner made true. Superman. I never put two and two together, probably even until this moment. <laughs> 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 Potentially, who do you want to interview next for this, for, for Goonies? Was there, is there a particular talent that you, th- you want to try and 
get hold of. I mean, I would definitely love to get Sean's interview in the bag first. So as Mm. soon as the crowdfund is successful, Mm. I would start plotting um, all the interviews. So what I normally do is I have a whole list of everyone that I want to interview and then I mark who's already said yes and then their locations and then I kind of plot out like what are the best things that I can do first to make the most of these international trips that I do and normally LA is always one of them there's always a handful of people and so um, definitely Sean's and there's also people that beyond the cast you know I want to do a really lovely tribute to Richard Donner Mm. in it you know he was a, a goonie to all of us and you know he meant so much to everyone that worked with him so there's a handful of people that um were not in the goonies but they worked with him on other projects and so i would yeah. start interviewing those as well and so it really is just starting to tick off people i people who have said yes um and sean's would be the first one because then obviously i can start promoting it and sharing things and are you hoping to sort of explore like the pop music to it and also you've got the the popular music video for the Goonies, which they all kind of feature in, which I don't know if Richard Donner had directed that music video, maybe potentially. I don't know, but definitely that's all part of it. You know, music is such an important element of of every film, especially in the 80s that, um, you know, to be a definitive documentary, you really have to cover everything. Mm. For me, yeah. that is not just the making of, but it's like, why is it so special? Why is it important to fans? The music, the legacy, all of that. So um, it's definitely going to be an exciting journey that I'm, an exciting adventure <laughs> I'm looking forward to taking on. I'm doing I'm doing everything. So if you send a message or send me an email on info at lifeaftermovies.com, if you have any questions about anything, the campaign runs until July 12. It's an all or nothing because I believe in it and I believe in Goonies fans. So the reality is we're doing these documentaries. Um, you know, I need these these crowd funds to to help make them happen and to to help um make it a really wonderful experience like made by fans with fans for fans so you know these crowd funds um are just really important to indie filmmakers to to allow me to do these so i appreciate every single person that backs the project or shares the project spreads the word um but july 12 is the cutoff so after all these years, what, why do you think um, The Goonies has stood the test of time? With all of these films, it's how it connects to you as a kid, isn't it? Mm. If you watch The Goonies as an adult, you might just go, oh, you know, mm. it's not going to win an Oscar. It should. But um, <laughs> I think it, it's like you watch The Goonies because of what it meant to you as a kid. You remember where you were as a kid. You remember how it impacted you as a kid. So... It was just such a like a an embedded part of my childhood and so many childhoods. Um, that's just what makes it so special. Is you know the eighties started to to cater to kids, and we had characters that were our age. And then suddenly you felt like you could be in the film and you could be friends with these kids. And it it just it totally shifted the dynamic of of movies at that time and how we watched them as children. So I think. It's really hard to pinpoint because it's such a personal experience, an individually personal experience for everyone of why these films are so special. But collectively, us 80s kids have the same memories of watching it on our little VHS with the tracking marks and, you know, <laughs> feeling like maybe we could go and find jewels in a marble bag. And it's it's just such a, a special part of so many childhoods. Final question for you, Lisa, is what is your favourite scene in The Goonies? I always liked the playing the bones scene because I grew up playing the piano. So for me, that was something that I, that was the moment I was like, well, I could do this. Like I could be the one in this moment that's <laughs> from that scene. So I always, even though like the map was all burnt and stuff and um, yeah, that was definitely the one as a kid. I always just thought I, I could have saved them in that scene too. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? There's so many great moments in that movie, but I always just love the banter between the villains. And you've got like they're trying to calm down Sloth, and he goes, "Remember the time we were going to spend your money to fix your teeth, but uh, we spent it money on Francis to pay." He's like, "I don't wear a hairpiece." You know, <laughs> this slams them together. The hairpiece flies off. So great little moments like that, or just when they're, you know, with the uh, the old ladies kind of. Getting him to sp- mouth to spit out all the uh, 
all the jewels, just whacks yeah. his head. He's just like firing yeah. out. The pearl necklace. Long necklace. <laughs> those little moments, those little isolated moments are always just superb comedy. And I think it's, yeah. it's, it's, that's the, it kind of plays on kids, kind of somewhat mimicking adults in their, in a sort of way they talk and the way they act. But they're just, they're just, because they're kids, they can't really fully do it. So they end up looking a bit stupid yeah. and goofy, which he kind of plays on the fantastic comedy. And, yeah. Um, and that makes you sort of connect with them. That's the weird thing, isn't it? They always put kids in films and try and hope make kids sort of in, aspire to be them in some way. Where most of the time kids want to aspire to be the adult, which is like, oh, I want to be John McClane, I want to be Robocop or something like that. Where in this yeah. instance, where Goonies, you want to be those kids or you want to kind of be friends with them. And that's the, yeah. that's the kind of unique thing about it. So, folks, yeah, Lisa's got a couple of weeks left on the Kickstarter. There's links below. Make sure to check it out and consider supporting this documentary. There isn't that many documentaries covering the Goonies in any extensive way. So this is going to be a kind of a first. And um, and it's worth checking out the rewards she offers because it's something very unique. I'm excited. And there are, <laughs> in the story of the crowdfund, if anyone wants to, if they're not familiar with my other work, the trailers are in the story at the bottom. So you can check that out as well. And also, there's uh, rewards where you can get your other ones with it, can't you? Can't you? Yes. There yeah. you go. So you won't miss out. So you can get the whole set collector's set as it were and the vhs that we're doing <laughs> yes oh my god that's crazy it's all happening <laughs> but then you got the you got the ball ache of creating a pal copy an ntsc copy haven't you it's not a ball ache <laughs> the company does it i just tell them the order <laughs> thank you lisa for joining me for this conversation and uh hopefully things work out for you and this does really well because i can't wait to see it thank you so much i'm so excited I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest reviews. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved and gain access to exclusive videos and take part in Q&As, follow the link below.